Hey you guys, it's Peter and welcome to my channel, Peter Likes Books. And this is my October wrap up. I know that it's almost the end of November and I haven't done an October wrap up yet, um, but I really want to do this because I've been trying to stick to doing a wrap up every single month and I read quite a few books in October, so I want to talk about those books. Now, I want to make some segue videos off of some of these books, um, so I am going to be doing that. I also have another video that I want to make um, that I've been just kind of like thinking about and I also have some book vlogs coming up, so I want to say that. I also want to say that um, I don't know if you guys have heard of the channel as told by Kenya, but I actually found Kenya through my drama channel because Kenya used to do and still does a lot of like uh, commentary videos about influencers on YouTube. That's how I found Kenya. And I love her, and she's got a great energy, and she is hilarious. Um, and just, I would say that our passion for talking about commentary about anything is very similar. So, Kenya had started doing book reviews, I think it was like six months ago or a year ago or something like that, and I would watch them from time to time. Uh, and I had kind of for forgotten about them. And so... I went to her channel late last night. I talked about this on my drama channel today too. Um, I went to her channel late last night and I was like um, looking through her videos and she's doing a lot more like bookish videos. I don't know if she considers herself booktube or not, but she's been doing a lot more bookish videos. And she did this review. It was like her September wrap up in October, which was hilarious because it was like the end of October, which was funny, right? It was very similar to what I'm doing right now. And she goes in and lets this book have it, you guys. And her reviews of these books, I mean, I was like almost bawling, crying, howling in the car. They are so hilarious. And um, like she can't remember the characters' names, but like she remembers all this about them. So if you guys are looking for somebody that is new and very passionate talking about books, but you know, not the old, very subtle, like, I really liked this book. I gave it three and a half stars, but kind of like in the camera, like, oh, oh, oh. She's so fantastic, you guys. So go check out As Told by Kenya. I absolutely adore her. And um, her book videos are like, they are some of the best I've ever seen. I actually am kind of surprised that they don't get as many views. as I thought I looked. And I think they get like nine or 10,000 views, which is good, right? But I was like, I thought they would get like 100,000 views. I mean, they're phenomenal book reviews. They are so good, you guys. So um, if I remember, I'll put her in the comment section below or the, the description box below so you guys can go check her out. If not, it's as told by Kenya. All right, so let's get into the books that I have read or that I read in the month of October. Um, I have to say, my goal for 2021 was 102 books. Last year, my goal was 100, and I think it was like right at the end of the year that I finished at 100 books. My goal this year is 102 books, and I have currently, I'm currently on my 100th book. So, I will be making it to 102 books this year, probably before the end of the month, easily. Um, and I have already read this month's book for a true crime book club, which is called A Dark Room in Glitterball City. I don't want to say a whole lot about that. I've talked quite a bit on my vlog, but we're going to do the live stream coming soon. And then um, this week, I think I'm going to, after Thanksgiving, I'm going to read the book for Peter's book club, which is Apples Never Fall by um, Liam Moyarity. So I'm going to read that by the end of the month as well. So, because um, I have decided going into December that I, in the month of December, I'm going to read all Christmas or cozy Christmas Christmas books or cozy Christmas mysteries. So for the month of October, though, I read 15 books. And I am very proud of myself. All right, so let's get into this. The first book that I read was Real Murders by Charlene Harris. She is famous for the Sookie Stackhouse novels. And um, this was the Aurora Tea Garden book number one. And I believe that... I need to clean off my glasses a little bit. <sighs> I feel like my dad now. I believe the Aurora Tea Garden books were made into like a Hallmark TV series or something like that. I don't know. If you guys know more about that, put it in the comment section below. And I would also like to know like how many of the books were made into part of the series because I really enjoyed the series or the, this first book. I do not want to continue to, I don't want to start the series, the TV series, if a lot of it is based on further books down the road, if that makes sense. Um, I am still continuing my, I have like a whole list of like, mystery and cozy mystery series like that list that I'm keeping that I'm reading 
I think I'm up to like 34, 35 series that I'm reading now, which is so funny. When I look back like three years ago and I was like, I, I don't like to read series. I only like to read standalones. And now like I'm obsessed with reading series, you know, of books. Okay, so the Aurora Tea Garden book, I gave, oh, I only gave it three stars. <laughs> That's funny because I, in retrospect, like I really liked it. Um, I've been trying to write reviews. I guess I did not write a review on that one. A little like reviews to remind me of what I think. So, oh, I did, but then I went on and I read the Aurora Tea Garden book number two, which is called A Bone to Pick, and I actually gave it four stars. And I did enjoy that. Um, and I remember what it's about now. And um, the second one is, well, I don't really want to tell you, but the second one is more about she, like, after this, like, she moves into this house and she inherits all this stuff. So, anyway, it's kind of like that. So, anyway, I'm excited to continue to read that series. I do enjoy that series. Here's the thing. Like, I, I decided to change my rating system. Uh, I think this was, like, six months ago. I saw somebody do this on Goodreads and I really liked it. One was poor. Two was okay. Three was good. Four was great. And five was, like, amazing. Like, changed your, like, whole outlook on things. Or that you really just were so into the read that you couldn't put it down, right? So that's how I've been judging books. So a three star to me is not bad. It just means the book was good. It just wasn't, you know? So four star for a cozy mystery. Like, if I give a cozy mystery four stars, when most cozies are just pretty average, you know, like, like they're not, like, earth-shattering or anything, like, that's, that's a big deal for me. So I remember the second book. I don't remember the first book as well, though, which is interesting. Okay, so I do know that she quit her job in the second book. Then I read uh, The House of Gucci since Sensational story, murder, madness, glamour, and whatever that they're basing the movie on. I'm seeing the movie this upcoming Wednesday. It's by Sarah Gay Forden. Um, they reprinted this book because I saw it actually at Meyer uh, last night, was it? I gave this book five stars. I have to tell you, um, and we did a whole live stream already on this. When I, um, haven't we, did we do the live stream on this already? Or does October, no, no we haven't done, is this the one that we haven't done the live stream on yet? No, this was the September book that I read in October, and then we did a live stream for it. Um, so, uh, when I started this, I was like, first of all, it was so long that I was like, oh my god, this is going to be so hard to get through. But just finding out all of the information about just the fashion houses and the history of Gucci and all that stuff, it was so interesting to me, you guys. Um, it was so much more than I thought it would be. And, I mean, it was like an epic tale of this family's like rise and fall like it was so so interesting it really read like this epa epa epic uh like like you know uh through the ages piece because it starts with the the grandfather who starts uh, the house of gucci and it goes all the way through to basically when they sell sell the business so it's very very interesting we gave it five stars it was fantastically researched and written then my next book was Grilled for Murder, and it was Country Store Mysteries Number 2 by Maddie Day. I love this series because it takes place in Indiana. It takes place in southern Indiana by Bloomington, which is where Indiana University takes place. And she owns this little restaurant, Country Day store, where she sells, like, cooking and antiques and things like that. And every, you know, there's always, like, a mystery. The only thing is that I think the main character, like, I like the narrator now, but, like, the narrator on the Audible at first, like, I struggled with. But here's the deal, is that the character is supposed to be, like, 28, and I feel like just, like, how she dresses in the book, and, like, her, like, fun activities that she does, and um, kind of just, I don't know, like, I feel like the author has aged her up. Like, she doesn't seem, like, 28 to me. She seems, like, 48 to me, in all honesty. I don't, it doesn't bother me, because I really enjoy, like, the mystery and the people in the town and stuff like that. And it's actually one of the Cozy Mystery series that's a little scary to me. But I have to just say that, like, the character, I just, it's, there would have been nothing wrong with making her 48. So I don't know why, if, like, that's in the author's <laughs> wheelhouse, so to say. <laughs> they were saying that on Ru RuPaul's Drag Race the other night. But, like, if that's her, like, knowledge area, like, I don't know why she wouldn't have written a character that was closer to that. I, because when you're reading it and you don't know her age... It seems like she's that age. And so then when you're reading it and she's like 28 and she, I don't know, it just, it's, it's kind of off-putting a little bit. But I gave it four stars. I really enjoyed it. Then the next book that I read was one of my highest um, anticipated books of 2021. And that was Aristotle and Dante, Dive into the Waters of the World. It was a sequel to Aristotle and Dante Discovers the Secrets of the Universe. Um, it picks up exactly where the first one ended. 
and um, it is about their senior year in high school together and what's gonna happen after that. And I gave it five stars. It was absolutely phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Um, and one of the things that I loved about it was um, well, Benjamin Eilir Science is probably one of my favorite authors of life, period, anyway. Um, his writing is just so poetic, and he writes characters like nobody's business. But the end of the book, which I don't want to spoil for anybody, because you should definitely read this book if you've read Aristotle, Aristotle and Dante before. The end of the book, um, I would say, I, 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 I really thought, like, nearing the end, it was going to end one way. Like, they really set it up to end another way. And it's, like, very realistic, but very fairy tale at the end. And I and I loved how it ended. I thought it was just so beautifully done. Um, and so, I mean, just bravo. Bravo to uh, uh, Benjamin Adler Signs. I mean, I think so many of us have been waiting for a sequel to this book for so long, and it did not disappoint, I have to tell you. I was super impressed. And there's a lot of issues that are dealt with in there. He deals with his brother. There's a lot. And th the one thing I loved about this book is that I had kind of forgotten that the first book took place like in the late 80s. So I'm sitting there and I'm listening to it. And what I realized is Aristotle and Dante were exactly like in the book were exactly a year older than I would have been at that time in high school. And they talk a lot about like the AIDS epidemic and coming out and like the trans community and things like that. And it's so like, it's such an important book, the way that he addresses these issues in the book, you know, and I don't know that <clears throat> there's any, there's much, I, I won't, I won't say any cause I don't know, but I wouldn't say, I don't think there's much young adult books. There's not many young adult books that are educating today's youth about the past, which as a gay man, that looks back on the people that came before me at Stonewall and, you know, marched and all of that kind of stuff. Like, I, I, and not just Stonewall, but so many different events, you know, that occurred to allow me to have the life that I have today. I think it is so important for us to be educated um, as part of the LGBTQIA plus community on the, the people who have paved the road before us and pay homage to them as well. And he does this in this book in such a fantastic way. All right, um, the next book that I read is My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. I gave it three stars, which was kind. Um, this book was so pumped highly as like one of the best horror novels of um, this year. I, so I went like up and down. It's about this girl that's like obsessed with horror novels and all this kind of stuff and uh, or horror movies. And I didn't really know like going into it what I thought. I really like her name was Jade. And I was like, okay, I really like Jade as a character and whatever. But then it was so slow, you guys. I mean, it was literally like a walk through the swamp. I, it was so, so, so slow. And like, there's, I am like seeing this book get praised everywhere. And I'm like, did we all read the same book? Like, seriously? Like, it wasn't scary. Okay. It just really wasn't scary at all. And then, this is the thing that I hate about books and mysteries and thrillers, okay? Is when you introduce an idea, like, so late in the book and you make that the reason. It's such a cheat of a read. It's so unfair. And so, at the very end of this book, it's like, Stephen Graham Jones had mentioned something at the beginning of the book. And then brings it back at the end. And I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? Like, it, like, in retrospect, like, thinking back on it, I'm like, it's kind of smart what he did. Like, because it's, it's a play on a trope that we don't usually ever see in a book, but I don't know. I just wasn't impressed with it. I will tell you, I wasn't impressed with it to the point that I won't read any more of his books. Like, I just didn't enjoy it, like, at the end. And it was so slow. The book could have been half the, half the length, and it would have been just as impactful. Um, the characters, I really did enjoy, though. Okay, and then the next book that I read was The Grown Up, which was a novella by Gillian Flynn, and I gave it five stars. I thought it was so fantastically done. It was so weird how it ended. Um, so, hold on a second. I want to, like, I don't remember if she's like... Okay, it's about this woman. This I remember now. It's about this woman, and she works in, like, this tarot card reading shop, right? Which is... <laughs> It's a little bit more illicit than that in the back room, okay? But anyway, she gets hired by this woman to come and she thinks that her stepson, I think, is, like, possessed. And so to come and, like, help out. And so even though she has no, like, real traits, she thinks she's going to make a lot of money this way. So she goes to help out. And it's this kind of, like... A, do you remember that movie with Macaulay Culkin where, like, the, he was, like, the... I don't know, the sibling, and he, like, hurt his sibling or whatever. And it's, like, that between that and the bad seed. And then it's paranormal, but it's not. And it's, like, 
You guys, I literally like got done with this book and like the last two minutes of this book, I was like, what just happened? Like this book just got so weird. And I was like, but it's brilliant at the same, it's like absolutely brilliant. And it's like three bucks on Audible. I listened to it on Audible. I think it's three bucks. So like go listen to it. Cause I'm telling you like the end of it, totally makes for the whole novella. Like, I listened to the end of it, and I was like, I can still see myself where I was driving in that moment. I was like, oh my god, what just happened? Like, this is crazy. So anyway, it was fantastically done, though, I thought. I think it's so hard to write a novella that's really good, you know, or really, you know, really enjoyable and whatsoever, or scary or whatever. So the fact that she was able to do that, I was impressed. The next book that I read was A Mary Shelley Club by Golda Madofsky. Um, it was a book about this girl, and it was very much like, um, like kind of like a YA horror movie a little bit, and it was about this girl, and she moved to this school, and she became part of this club, and they pulled pranks on people, but the pranks were like, like ending in death. It was kind of scary. The book was kind of scary, honestly. And um, the character building was okay. It was kind of flat a little bit to me. But there is a reason why. It starts off very much like, if you've seen the movie Scream, you know, with like Drew Barrymore and then it flashes forward to like the main characters. That's how it happens in this book. Um, but I will tell you, pay attention because you can solve this mystery if you pay close enough attention. I didn't know what was happening until the very end because there's like a reveal, a reveal, a reveal like that. It is done so well. I actually don't, I'm kind of surprised it's not getting more attention than it did. So anyway, I gave four stars to Goldie Madofsky's The Mary Shelley Club. The next book that I read was The Whisper Man by Alex North. Hold on, I said read two of these. Okay, so The Whisper Man... Hold on a second, because I'm going to forget which one was which. The Whisper Man was about these kids that... Okay, the, it was about this kidnapping. Is that the one that was the kidnapping? Hold on a second, yes. Uh, okay, so... Alex North is probably one of the greatest new thriller writers of our time, okay? And he wrote this book called The Whisper Man. And I was wanting to read scary books for Halloween. So it's about this dad and his son, and the mom has passed away from cancer, I believe. So they moved to this new town in England, and it's a small town, and um, there, there's this kid that has just been kidnapped. And there was this... Kidna these kidnappings that occurred like 25 years before that were called, both of his books are very like this with flashbacks to years. They don't actually have flashbacks, but like it, it but it flash flashes back to things that had occurred before. So it was about this whisper man and these kids being um, uh, kidnapped by, you guys, it is phenomenal. Truly, truly scary. I was so impressed with this book, The Whisper Man, that I went and I bought his second one. And it's, this is not in the order that I read, but the second one is called The Shadows. And The Shadows is about this group of kids that were friends in college or in high school or middle school. And um, like one of them was murdered. And then it's like years later, this guy comes back to take care of his mom and then she passes away. And the shadows refers to this area of woods that is like you walk into the shadows. And it's about these this group of kids. They were in high school. And they became very, very, there's four of them. And they became obsessed with um, lucid dreaming and being able to actually do things in lucid dreaming. It's so interesting, you guys. And it is so well done. I give it five stars. It's probably probably one of the top five books I've read this year. I was, and I was terrified reading this book. And that's called The Shadows. And that's by Alex North. So, yeah. In between there, the next book that I read um, after The Whisper Man was The Woods Are Always Watching by Stephanie Perkins. Ugh! This book was horrible. I gave it one star. And that was because it got published. I mean, period. It was about these two girls and they worked at the Kmart together and they were seniors in high school and there was this one girl and she was poor and so of course she couldn't afford to go to college and any of this kind of stuff and she was real bitter at her friend and then um so th they like haven't really had any fun in high school because they've been working all the time and working on their grades and all this kind of stuff while everybody else has been partying so they're real bitter about that so then they're like oh we should do something really fun what should we do well we should go hiking in the uh, Appalachian Mountains what Two 17-year-olds, and their parents are completely fine with this. Two 17, 18-year-olds going hiking in the Appalachian Mountains by themselves. They've never been hiking before. They don't know anything about it, okay? Like, so bad that they go into the woods, and they're like, oh, do we have, a, like, a thing for bears to keep our food so that the bears don't come and get us? You guys, it's so weird. This girl ends up in this hole she can't get out of, and they don't, they're, they're so dumb that they don't, they're not even, like, oh, somebody built this hole. Like, they don't even get it, right? Like, when the guy's, like, standing over them, they're like, we just fell into a hole. I'm like, there's a hole in the ground that's big enough for a person to be down in, and there were leaves over it, and you don't think that that was a setup. So, of course, it's like these, you know, Appalachian guys are, like, chasing them and wanting to kill them and all this kind of stuff, right? 
guess what saves him at the end? A bear, because that's what was the first thing that was mentioned in the book. This book was so bad. And this was on the heels of me just watching that, the, um, Alex and I watched the, what do you call it? The Stephanie, um, the Stephanie Perkins. And I like Stephanie Perkins. I liked the, the two anthologies that she put out. I liked the two short stories that she wrote in those anthologies. I like Stephanie Perkins. I really liked that book that she put out last year. There's someone in your house or side of your house or whatever that they made into the Netflix show. I even thought the Netflix movie was good. This was horrible. This was one of the worst books I have ever read in my entire life. I mean, it was cheesy. It was absolutely cheesy. I can't even imagine... You know, trying to get stuff printed or pu publish myself. I can't even imagine a literary agent or a publisher reading this and being like, yeah, we should publish it. It's it's a joke. It's so bad, you guys. I could not wait for it to be over. It's literally like these two girls just like like up and down. And I mean, they don't even know. It's so boring, you guys. It is so... Don't read it. I'm just telling you right now. It's bad. And then the next book that I read was A Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay. Um, why don't I remember this book? Um, hold on just a second. I gave it four stars. Um. Oh, 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 okay. So, this is about, this is actually told in retrospect. And it's interesting. Now, I read Paul Tremblay's book. Not that I had to look up the description to see what it was about. I read Paul Tremblay's book, uh, The Cabin at the End of the World, a couple years ago for a spookathon that Books and Lala put on. And I loved it. And I really liked it. So, I was like, I really like his writing style. He's fantastic. This one... It's about this woman, and she's doing this interview, okay, about her sister. And her sister was supposedly possessed, and they did this exorcism on it, on her, which they turned into a television show. This, too, would have taken place at the same time that I was growing up, okay? Now, I will tell you what's interesting about this, okay, is that in this book, um, Paul Tremblay makes reference to Stephen Graham Jones, who wrote My Heart is a Chainsaw, so apparently they're, like, real good friends in real life, because... It's at the end of the book, and she says something about her tutor, and her tutor is Stephen Graham, this guy named Stephen Graham Jones. I was like, okay, that has to be. So anyway, but I was like, that's just too much of a coincidence. And so I looked him up, and yes, they speak together, and they're friends, and all that kind of stuff. This book is really, really well done. It was about this girl, and um, so it's, she's in high school, and it's like, is she possessed? Is she faking it? What's really going on? And you do find out at the end of the book because you think you're not going to. And it's like, I mean, crazy stuff happens. Is it the family's just putting it on because they need money? Like, what happens? But what you find out at the beginning of the book is that she's the only one alive. Everybody else in the family has died. And you don't know why, okay? And I'm telling you right now, when you get to the end of this book and you find out what's going on, oh, oh you guys, it's, it's done so well. Because you really don't know until the very end of the book. Like, you have no clue. I'm telling you, you have no clue. It is that well done. So, I gave it um, four stars. I probably should have given it five stars because it was that good. And then I read The Shadows. And then I read Unspeakable Things. Um, I put love of story and character development and the pop culture references, but it never really caught fire. Um, yeah, this was about this girl. And hold on a second. Why am I not remembering some of these books? Um... This was another one. It was like this thriller thing. And it was about kids going missing in this town. And you didn't really know why the kids were going missing in town. It was these guys that were going. And, and um, not very nice things were happening to them. And then they were coming back. And after they came back, like, they had changed in some way. And it was about this girl. And she lived with her parents. And it was like in the 80s. It kind of was unbelievable to me, to be honest with you. Like, her dad and her mom were so weird that she, like... I'm like getting this book, and I'm also getting the other book um, kind of mixed up. Head full of ghosts. No. But anyway, uh, they're, they're kind of similar in a bit. There's a lot of pop culture references and unspeakable things. But here's the thing. Her mom and dad, who, like, mom was, like, a teacher, and dad was, like, a, a, like did this metal art stuff. They, like, had these parties that were, like, drinking, drugs, wild sex, and, like, swinging and all this kind of stuff that, like, people in town came to. And they were infamous for these parties. But then, like, a lot of the town looked down on the whole family for these parties. And it just... And then she... It's like she finds out more about her sister. And it's just... <clears throat> you guys, you know, I don't even understand... I don't even remember how this book ends. Isn't that so crazy? It actually was not a, um... A long book. Um... 
Yeah, I don't even remember how that book rem ends, but here it is. Here are some of the reviews on it. How, why, how is it I don't remember how this book ends? Um, probably because it really wasn't that great. And I ended up giving it three stars or uh, whatever. The Midnight Man by uh, Carolyn Mitchell. Okay, um, I gave the, God, why am I not remembering some of these books tonight? I ended up giving this five stars. I said, oh my God, one of the best mystery thrillers I've read this year, a must read. Five stars, I don't even remember it. Okay, um, I feel like this is about a detective. Okay, yeah, so this is about this woman detective. And I, now I feel like as told by Kenya when she can't remember the names of the character, or names of the characters. It's about this woman. And um, she has been, like, off the force as a detective for, like, a year. And she doesn't really know why. And, or you don't really know why at the beginning of the book. You find out, right? And it's something that... It's pretty dark. And um, so, anyway, there's this, like... This one takes place in England, too. There's, like, this castle out in the middle of nowhere that, like, this dad supposedly killed his entire family, his kids, and everybody, right? Okay. So, kids go out there. They scratch on the door or something like that. They light a candle, and then the mystery man is supposed to come out, and whatever. So, when the book starts, there's four girls that go out there, and only three of them come back. Or five girls that go out there, and only four of them come back. And so, this is the thriller mystery, right? Right. You guys, it is so well done. The character development is unbelievable. There's a police chief that I absolutely fell in love with in the book. It is so good, you guys. And I really hope it turns into a series because it was really, really good. And the main character is like, you see her grow in strength over time. Like, she's petrified to go back to her job. And then she goes back and she becomes like, she's like an assault. It is such an empowering book. Like, and it's such a great thriller, too. And it's called um, The Midnight Man. And it is by Carolyn Mitchell. So that was five stars that I gave it. Okay. And then the last book that I read in October was Hocus Pocus and the new sequel, which I gave three stars to. The first half of it, which was the original Hocus Pocus, the movie, was just basically the exact movie, like, turned into a book. It was really well translated if you want to read the movie as a book. Like, even the intonation of the characters was exactly like the movie. So if you want to read the movie, there you go. The second half of it is 25 years later, and Allison, and I can't even remember his name, Jake, I think, they um, have had a, uh, a daughter, and she's in high school in the same town. They live in the same town. And um, so her and this guy, they, and the, her and this friend, they go to the Sanderson. It's the same story 25 years later, okay? Um, I will say there's a lot of diversity in the sequel, which I liked. I thought that, that was fantastic. Um, and then on top of that, you know, like the first one, there's like a cat and, and this one, there's a dog. I mean, it's just, it's very similar. You guys, it's cute. It was a cute read. I would have loved reading it when I was like in middle school. I would have loved reading it had I never seen Hocus Pocus before too. So if you've never seen Hocus Pocus, read the book, then watch the movie. It would be, you would, it would be delightful for you. If you literally have never seen Hocus Pocus, read the book, read the sequel and then watch the movie because you would enjoy it. You really would. Um, but it's such a Halloween book, you know. But I'm glad that I read it. It's been over there on my bookshelf forever, and I wanted to read it. I think it was on my list for Spookathon years ago, and I never read it. So now that Spookathon is no more, I was like, I'm going to read it. And that was the last book that I read in October. So that is it. So <laughs> 15 books that um, I read for the, the month of October. And I don't know how many books I've read in November so far. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hey, I'm on my ninth book for November so far. So anyway, how's your reading going? Let me know. I'm in the comment section below. If you have any really, really great Christmas books um, for me to read for the month of De December, please put it in the comment section below. I love you guys, and I'll see you real soon. Bye.